Alrighty, took a brief break, we're back now. Again, if you missed any of the first little bit, we're doing the Darkening of Tristram solo event to try to go for the Butcher Pet. Uh, and at the end I will also be doing the uh, Royal Calf Pet, showing you how to get that. Uh, coming back from break, we've cleared the first 8 of the 16 levels, we're now on level 9. We're also doing full clears of every single level, so even if we find the dungeon end, we're still going to make sure we clear out everything, because we're going for the achievement to kill all 40 of the unique spawn dungeon monsters that are unique to the Darkening of Tristram event. Uh, you get, again, the uh, special little portrait frame for your character that looks like this little demon that holds up your health globe here. And here we go, speaking of which, here's a unique spawn, right off the bat. Why did I use my horse? That's a silly move. And it seems that there's usually at least one per level. Uh, on a couple of the levels we've gotten multiple. So it's a good thing to be checking every little nook and cranny. Uh, I think we're at something around 21, 22 of the 40. In fact, we can go ahead and check that real quick. Let's see. So it's going to be under the special event. So we've killed at least 20. Uh, we are currently missing... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So we're at twenty-three of forty, missing seventeen of the guys. And that's what awards us with that demon portrait. Black Mushroom, which I already have. That gives me my second Mushroom, plus I already have the Potion. Now, this is the item that will be used later to acquire the Royal Calf Pet. It'll be uh, a string of little events inside the uh, old Tristram area that we'll go through later. So it's not really necessary for me to have another one of these, because I already have one plus the next item in the chain already. But just showing you it here on level 9, you find that... Uh, pile of mushrooms you click on it and that's how you get it it'll always be on level 9 though the layout will vary we'll go ahead and get these upgrades equipped on us patience so Explored this whole level. It's a pretty short level. Wait, wait, did Not we? There was that little bit. Hopefully, that's not missing anything. Doesn't look like it is. Level 10. sometimes dead villager Patience. no loot for us that's a pretty selfish act dead villager get your game together another rare spawn whether or not it's one we need or not I'm not sure the flare probably once I get closer to getting them all done say get like down to 10 or less, I'll actually make a list and keep track of what I'm looking for. Let's see, we don't want to go all the way down there just yet, because I'm pretty sure that's the way I'm supposed to go. So we'll just check up here. And 
dead end. Yep. I'm pretty sure down is the way I'm supposed to go. Oh my gosh. Griswold's Edge, huh? I don't think I ran into that last time playing through. Interesting. So we instantly clicked on the anvil, got that sword, and all that popped up. And of course it's a significant downgrade, but let's see. Give a man a sword and you can make him a warrior. Teach a man to forge and you can raise an army. For those who don't know, Griswold is uh, one of the original townsfolk from Diablo 1. We're going to be resurrecting him later again when we do that Royal Cath event. But yeah, I didn't run into that last time. That's interesting. There's so many little... There's the achievements they have and the uh, transmorgs and awards, but there's beyond that just all these tiny little throwbacks and nostalgic items they have. Which is pretty cool. That was one of them. Oh, see, and so we did go the right way. That means we have to run all the way back and explore the other end. It doesn't look like it's too far, though. Not yet. Not ready yet. What was up here? Dead end. Stupid ass beast. They hurt. They do a lot of damage. When they actually hit ya. Patience. And a dead end. Alright. So that does it for that level. We had the one unique guy on there. Let's just head on down. Alrighty, we are now in level 10. I said 10. Ha! We're in level 11. Took me a second. That was a pretty slow reaction to my own stupidity. That means. Not ready yet. Not yet. <laughs> he blew himself up. <laughs> He's almost as stupid as I am. Patience. Ooh, a socket helm with a pretty significant damage increase. Oof. So here's the thing, we could throw one of these on and actually wield our two-handed weapon with our shield because we could just switch our trait. That'd be a pretty significant damage increase, so we're gonna do that. So we're gonna switch Fervor over to Heavenly Strength, which lets us hold the two-handed weapon in one hand as long as the other is just a shield. Can't do wield or anything. 
That'll be a pretty big damage buff, if you notice. Two, 121 to 201. Pretty significant. So even though that was a common item without any affixes. Alright, so we need to go back down. We definitely have a lot more to explore in this area before we go to the next level. We didn't run into a single unique monster on this level yet, so hopefully there'll be one down in this little... That'll probably connect. Maybe we two dead ends, but we'll see. There we go. Fangspire. Not ready yet. There we go. Got that cleared out. Big old loop around, but we got the uh, unique monster, which is what we were looking for. Again, I don't know if I'm going to be getting a lot of duplicates or not, so hopefully not. Hopefully we're getting some fresh ones, to getting towards that 40 unique monster achievement. Get that uh, portrait frame. Level 12. So counting this level, we have 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Five more levels to go before we run into the Dark Lord. Not yet. Level 22. Not ready yet. Patience. Lots of gold. I mean, by the standard of this level, quite an insignificant amount of gold overall, for sure. Oh, nice, a unique spawn. Ooh, excuse me. And a dead end. Which is good. We want dead ends because we don't want to be exploring forever. We want to make sure we get the whole place cleared. Not yet. Long empty hallway. Splendid chest, very nice. Check for some upgrades, very nice. Oh yes. Alrighty, and we're actually full on inventory, so let's head back, clear out our inventory. Go 
ahead and salvage each of these. Put this again here. See, we have our two mushrooms. And this item here, the Witch's Brew, is the item you get from the mushroom, which you start to use to not resurrect. I keep saying resurrect, but bring back the ghosts of some of the dead villagers. And you uh, chain that all together. It gives you a recipe to create Wurt's leg. You then create Wurt's leg, and then decreate it. You deconstruct it, and it gives you a unique item that you didn't use in the construction. And use that to go get the uh, royal calf pet. Alrighty, looks like we went full circle. Uh, the entrance is probably there, so we'll go explore a little bit over here. Character not looking too shabby right now. Patience. Yep, dead end. So it's going to be up in the center pit right there. Not yet. There we are. Level 13. And we're back out of the uh, cavern tile set into the dungeon tile set, which... There was a phone call I was on earlier with my brother. We were discussing the original Diablo one, and uh, he pointed out that you know this is all, this isn't the right tile set. This was all supposed to be as soon as you got to this point, you're now in hell. Like literally, lo rivers of fire, lava, burning brimstone. You're supposed to be in hell at this point. And they had tile sets that they could have used that would have been better so if they had pulled like from their resources from say, Act 3, oh, kill another unique guy, they could have easily recreated that look, but instead they chose these ones for whatever reason. So, I mean, it's definitely a fun event. I feel like there's a couple things they could have done better. I almost feel like the butcher should have been in this room. Look at that. Steel Tome. Alrighty. The Steel Lord. The armories of hell are home to the Warlord of Blood. In his wake lay the mutilated bodies of thousands. Angels and man alike have been cut down to fulfill his endless sacrifices to the Dark Ones, who scream for one thing, blood. Alrighty, let's go find this Warlord of Blood. Hmm, that didn't take long. And a legendary ring, very nice. Leoric Signet. That's funny that a land random legendary drop dropped Leoric Signet. It's just kind of like a, a fitting drop. Leoric being one of the original villains of Diablo 1. That's interesting. So which ring do we want to replace? We want to replace this one. Alright, let's get a move on. That was a pretty short level. 
just gave us the uh, Warlord of Blood, and all right, down to level 14. Three more levels, counting this one: 14, 15, 16. Not yet. Make your peace quickly. Destroy their torture device. Not ready yet. Ooh, that was bloody. Not yet. Oh, there's a unique spawn down there. Good. We need more of those. Star Eye the Witch. Why are you running away, Star Eye? Just want to get to know you. Ooh, that's a good upgrade. Heck yeah, I'll take 14% damage for losing 10% toughness. Patience. Don't you tell me patience. I can trouble you. Not ready yet. Oh. Getting sick of your sass. So there's the level, but we need to explore more because we had two different pathways we didn't explore back up there. And this may be a third. Oh. Now, was that Lakdanon's corpse? Did I click on it without realizing that was Lakdanon's corpse? I think it was. Poor Lakdanon. No man loved his king as much as Lakdanon did, even as he killed him. I paraphrased the quote. Falling sword jump. Out of my way. Not yet. As Fezzik the Giant would say, everybody move. All right, so that's full circle. Not ready yet. Level 15. And honestly, this is like the last real level because 16 is just this little bit with the Lord of Terror at the end, I'm pretty sure. So it's like just the little four room compartment that has him in it. Now we're seeing a lot more of these priests. More of Archbishop Lazarus's lackeys.
the visor or the visier. I'm pretty sure I've beaten this one before, so unfortunately I don't think it will count towards our uh, elite mob count. Ooh, that's a pretty big damage buff. I <laughs> love those explosions. Akarat's champion? Ooh, that's a good one. Good old blood smears on the floor. That's how you know a place is good. Good and family friendly. Man, I'm already getting full again. Yeah, let's go back and empty out go. once again. Doesn't really change the look at all. It's a little disappointing, but I understand. Take a lot of resources to generate entirely new armor graphics, new models and stuff. It wasn't really worth it for this minor event. Still makes me sad though. Get rid of this crappy low level diamond. I was mistaken on that. It is the uh, Unholy Altar is level 16. So there's almost technically 17 levels because as soon as you beat this one, you go down into the just like little four chamber room. Lazarus doesn't show up until you clear out these side rooms. The thing is, you can't just go in there, the doors are not even clickable. You have to go down to these sides, there's teleporters that'll put you into the room and you can't get out of it till you kill everything in it. And then we 
go down to the other side. It'll put us in this room. I think this is now Lazarus has spawned as well. Ooh, man. He's throwing some big old fireballs at me. He turned invisible. There we go. Archbishop Lazarus. And this little jerk. Good. Get backed up. Oh. I wanted it backed up in the corner. He didn't want to be, though. You Get wrecked! Alright. Pick up all your loots. Now let's go down into Labyrinth level 16. Man. I swear we already had level. I mean, technically it calls this, this level 16, even though we're on level 16, and this is really level 17. It's just called Unholy Altar. And this is where we will fight the Dark Lord. It kind of open. There's going to be... He's in there. You can't see him yet. Alrighty, one more switch. One more switch, we're almost done. Ah, oh, there he is! That'll help clear us out. Oh! Oh! We're getting murdered! Sir Gorash is dead. Now we just have the Dark Lord himself. Oh man, he moves so fast. Oh, don't get hit. That does a lot of damage. Almost got him. Ow! Boom. Some good stuff right there. For you who don't know, story-wise, the original person with the soul stone in their head was one of the uh, sons of the king, Leoric. It was his younger son who had been essentially tricked by Lazarus or captured by Archbishop Lazarus and had the soul stone implanted in him so that he could be the host for the Dark Lord Diablo. 
And then slowly, but surely, the King Laoric himself was corrupted just by being in their presence, becoming the Skeleton King. And even though the character, the hero, is your character that you're playing through story-wise, it's actually the older son of Laoric who turned out to be the hero who came down and slayed Diablo. But then, of course, in his folly and his pride, believing he could contain the Dark Lord, put the Soul Stone in his own head. And that's what you just saw right there. The uh, amazing graphical cutscene from the original 1991 game? Is it 91? Sometime in that area. Alrighty. No good upgrades. Let's just go ahead and break it all down. Get rid of these crappy low-level gems. I've got some brand new goods you might be interested in. All right. So we killed all of the main bosses. So let's open this up. Achievements. As far as this goes, did we get any more unique ones? We still need one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So we got three more unique ones in that run. So we still need fourteen guys to kill to get the uh, demon portrait. We need to get the rest of the cultist pages to get the angel portrait, which we have four of the seven, and my wife has the other ones. And luckily, we didn't know this, they're actually tradable, so we can actually get those later. So I'm going to go ahead now and go get the Ort's leg. So we'll show you how to do that. So you come here. You have to have found the uh, item the uh, black mushroom. The which, or the rotted mushroom. Which here, actually. I need to go back. I'll go back and get it now. I'll show you from the beginning even though I already have the secondary item. So you need this. Rotted mushroom. Uh, which gives you this, which is brew but I'll show you how to get it. Oh, if my horse wasn't a retard. Some good quality sounds there for that moving. So you come to Adria's hut, you click on the cauldron. You have to have that mushroom in your inventory, and it exchanges it for this, the Witch's Brew. See, I now have two Witch's Brew. You come back down into town. And you go to Old Fire Them, who was the drunk in the town. And his ghost comes back. He can't really do anything to it, but it's in its original position from the game, where he would sit there and drink. And we get the drunkard's debt. This was all the treasure Farham had left, which he'd hoped to use to keep his favorite place in business. So that's a clue for you, because we then have... I believe it's Ogden, who ran the inn where he got drunk... Yep, you give him that, his gold, to keep his inn in business. And his ghost comes back. Garda's letter. A heartfelt letter from Ogden's wife to the healer of Tristram in regards the fate of Canasi's child. I don't recall that. But that means we come down to the healer. Pepin's corpse. He comes back. And then the healer's prescription. Pepin's detailed schematics for a child's wooden leg. And then we go over to Grizzlewald, who was the blacksmith who would use said schematics. And Grizzlewald's back where he belongs. Plan for Wurt's leg. So we now have the recipe to go create Wurt's leg. We go back to town. To back. New Tristram, no longer here. Go to Griswold, 
or not Griswold, Griswold's dead, Hadrig, our current blacksmith, and teach him that plan. I believe it's a mace, one-handed mace. There we are. There we go. A very weak, terrible weapon, but as soon as we create it, it costs one million to make, oh gosh. We get an achievement. We get the Wirt's leg. Poor Wirt. I did all that was possible for the child, but I know that he despises that wooden peg I was forced to attach to his leg. Whose wounds were hideous, no one, and especially such a young child, should have to suffer the way he did. Pepin. So we have the leg, which now gives us a permanent transmog option. I don't know if this weapon will be viable for it. It's not. Put the weapon on real quick. That's what it looks like, and any weapons that match up its weapon type, you can now transmorg to look like that, because who wouldn't want to run around with a peg leg as a weapon while slaying the unfathomable evils of hell? But the big thing is, we now take it, and we actually break it back down. And instead of giving us the things we used to build it, it gives us this, Map of the Stars. You probably weren't supposed to find this old map. It appears to have a hoof print stamped on it and in the numbers 2, 1, 3. So let's go back. We need to go back up to Adria's hut. And the order of cows is two, one, and three. And clicking on them without that map in your inventory will do nothing. Since we just did it, it opened up this portal to the abandoned farmstead. We come in here. And look! It's a bunch of cows. Reminiscent of the cow level from Diablo 2. Even the layout is pretty similar as far as the uh, terrain in the walls and the grass and everything. The only difference is that the cows are on four legs and being actual cows instead of being on two legs, wielding halberds and killing you to the battle cry of moo, 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 moo. So we'll go around, explore the whole area. Lots of cows. But then in the center, get the whole thing explored. We have Wurt's Stash. Some gold, but most importantly, the Royal Calf. This young creature is a regal heir, as though he holds some special place within his herd. Who knows what they would do if he went missing. We have now learned the pet. Go to pets. And there we go. The royal calf. Let's see what he looks like back in the actual world, not under this pixelated effect. Looks much nicer. <laughs> and there we go, all for the cow. Oh, and, uh, let's see, where was... I got this as well, an eerie red glow blurs your vision. I had also achieved that for doing the solo darkening Tristram event. So let's go ahead and equip that pet now as well. The Butcher. He may be little, but he is fierce. There we are. So the only things left to do, we've gotten most of the achievements. We still have to get the cultist pages. And we have to acquire or kill all of the unique monsters to get the two portrait frames. But beyond that, we have completed the Darkening of Tristram event. 
Uh, thanks for watching, and when we get closer to getting those other ones up, I'll have another part of a video to show you what those look like on the portrait frame. But until then, have a great time. We'll catch you later.